I was recently working with a client that was thinking about leaving their employment to become a consultant and they are unhappy with their work and they really couldn't even imagine that they would be able to support themselves on their own as a consultant. So in this video, I want to step you through how much you could make consulting in retirement. Even if you have no interest at all in consulting, you might be thinking like many people think, oh my gosh, that's the last thing I want to do. That feels like work. I don't want to work. I'm looking forward to doing nothing. And that doesn't always last, that feeling of wanting to do nothing. So this is a great exercise for a couple of different reasons. Even if you feel like you don't want to do consulting, that's the last thing you would ever want to do. And let me tell you why it's a really great exercise. Number one, it can really reduce the financial fear that most people face as they're headed into retirement, as it did with my client who was looking at retiring early. It really was an awakening moment to say, wow, I can make that much money. And that is a doable thing for me. We're going to go through a little math exercise here. So the second reason that you would want to do this is it can be sort of a plan B. You know, I love plan B's because we just don't know what the stock market's going to do. We don't know what interest rates you're going to do. We don't know what lies ahead with our investments in particular. So I love a plan B. I'm think it's always smart to have one. The third reason to consider how much you could make doing consulting in retirement is because, well, you might find that you're bored or unfulfilled. A lot of people are worried about that deep down as they head into retirement. So we're going to go through some math here. So what I want you to do, and I'll give you a very specific example, and you can do this with your own numbers. I love math. It doesn't lie. Okay, so let's just take a really round number salary of $100,000 a year, and let's divide that by 52 weeks out of the year. And that comes out to $1,923 a month. Now, let's divide that by 40 hours, and that comes out to $48 an hour. So here's how we're going to look at this. If I'm making $48 an hour, this company is paying me for my salary of $100,000 a year, and I'm making $48 an hour, it seems pretty logical that someone would hire me on a consulting basis for at least that much. But really, it's probably going to be a lot more than that. And the reason it would be a lot more than that is because the person that's hiring you wants you only for a few hours. It could be one hour or it could be five hours or 10 hours. And when you pay someone on, you know, just for a few hours versus for an, as an employee, then you're going to pay them a lot more money. The other reason that you would make a lot more money as a consultant is because there are no benefits that have to be paid by the person that's hiring you. So you make a lot more money. You could easily double this number, maybe even triple or quadruple this number. I've seen the number be much, much higher than even quadrupling this. In people that I know and clients that I've worked with, what they've been able to make on a consulting basis and based on my own experience in consulting versus employment. So take a look at the number and see how much you're making on an hourly basis in your job. Now, one thing to consider here is you're probably also paying for commuting or spending your time, your life commuting. And I know a lot of people are working from home now, so this isn't always the case. But let's say that maybe you spend 10 hours a week getting dressed for work, which we really sort of have to do, especially for women, even if you're at home, and getting dressed and dealing with getting organized for work and or probably commuting at least some days for work. So let's say you spend just another 10 hours a week on that that's geared toward getting you to, to your work, okay? And in that case, you're making $38 an hour. 
there could be even more adjustments that you want to make. If you think about your life and how much time and effort is going into getting you to that job or being, you know, toward that job, maybe it's getting clothes or whatever it is that you have to deal with toward that job. So that's what you want to look at in this second scenario. If you work more than 40 hours a week, here's another adjustment you'll want to make. Your hourly rate will be even less. A lot of people work 50 hours a week in their jobs and even more. So use the number of hours that you work. Now, there are pros and cons, of course, for jobs versus consulting. You know, employee benefits and and the lack of benefits when you're a consultant are, are hugely important. So you have to weigh that for yourself. Could you get good medical insurance? I can tell you from my own experience, the medical insurance as an individual or a tiny, tiny business is not anywhere near as good as you can get. Let aside the cost, it's not as good as you can get on your own. You're probably going to make, though, a lot more money on an hourly rate as a consultant. You're going to have more flexibility, even though the income will be inconsistent. You will have some tax benefits, though, to being on your own. But you've got to be really careful because if you make too much money consulting, then that increase in taxes can make your Social Security taxable or even affect your benefits. If you want me to talk more about these pros and cons of consulting versus employment, I'll be happy to do that. Just leave a comment in the comment section. If enough of you are interested, I'll be glad to do a video about this. It's something that I know very well myself, having done both. And remember, whatever you decide, retire certain.